this is why I should just, I got, I gifted myself like, you know, better headphones and there's all these fucking buttons. You hold it over here for two seconds and like this turns into ambient mode. It's just like a whole thing. I didn't read the instructions, of course. I was like, yeah, I'll just figure out the sign. Yeah. So, you know, that was just me. Just I think this is a great way for me just to say welcome to the show, Solo, darling. And now let's just keep talking. Let, let's keep talking about how shit we all are with technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and by and by that, I mean me and Solo, because Callum's a graphic designer, so he can do all that stuff. But I oh, figured okay. me and you, me and you, Solo, uh, uh, pretend. I'm guessing you're as useless as, as me with technology. Yeah, yeah. Give me like. You know, any kind of like science or feelings or like any of that good stuff. Maybe like look into a night sky, discuss some big topics. Cool. <laughs> you need me to like alt F four something and like we're screwed. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't have the best idea. I, I literally thought I could turn Callum's computer on before by touching the screen. Uh, it didn't work. It, it, it didn't work. work. I would it, try it anyway. Well, I could try. I was yeah. ever try. But- it, it was rubbish. It really was. But see, this is how old we should start talking about how shit we are with technology, right? This is how we should start. You just want to like don't set any expectations, you know? Keep them yeah. real low. That's it. We, we literally. I'd like to be bad with technology. I'd like to not understand computers. Oh, here we go. Humble brag. Humble brag. I can't help that I'm so oh. good at technology. Guys, Smart. it's a burden being this good at technology. I, <laughs> you don't you get know, it. You know what is nice? Finally having someone like Solo, who's actually on my side for once, who can gang up on you. Normally the other way around. Who's ever on my side that we've interviewed? I'm always the punching bag for any kind of abuse on this show. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's not, but that's how you should start the interview. We literally <laughs> don't write anything down, so nothing's written down. We just that's like great. to chat. I floor. don't know if you can tell. We don't really have a like a, a plan for the show. We just <laughs> we just kind of go in. We have a little bit of a laugh. Maybe maybe talk mm. some wrestling at some point. Oh yeah. There's that thing. I do that, huh? You, you do. It feels like it's, <laughs> it feels like it's been a million years. <laughs> how how has it been? Dare I ask? Uh, have you been doing okay with the? Obviously, you know that you've not been wrestling as much. How have you been finding that downtime? Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. hold on, hold on. Oh, you, oh, we're we're misunderstanding here. Not wrestling does not mean I have downtime. I don't even oh, okay. know how to take a nap. Okay. Uh, I don't understand the concept of like rest. Unless it's like rest and recovery, something active, uh, mindfulness, still active. Uh, <laughs> so as soon as it was like wrestling had downtime, um, I mean, over quarantine, I did an entire garden, um, learned how to install a door. I know I like weird projects like that, I like building stuff, <laughs> training my dogs. Um, they're like a full time job. And then when everything kind of like really blew up with all that like hot topic. I'm not sure we're going to get to today, but um, we all know what we're talking about here. I saw uh, exactly where I needed to be, um, which is uh, I'm at UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, for I'm going to complete my bachelor's finally. I had two of them before, left right before I graduated to pursue wrestling. Um, So I have a bachelor's in arts and sciences in positive psychology and neuroscience so that I can get into the master's of applied positive psychology program because I want to bring... Uh, actually a practice of sorts to wrestling yeah. obviously with an entire online feature right like that has to all go into account because the goal is reach and having outreach mm-hmm. is really important and last year was a lot of like cutting and getting rid of uh, but just because you get rid of something doesn't mean you all of a sudden have happiness and enrichment and fulfillment no. and know what the hell to do with your elbows who the fuck knows what to do with their elbows so <laughs> what you know, what the fuck are elbows? Uh, so I feel like yeah. getting all of that information, just why I wanted to bring it home. Like wrestling mm. my whole family needs help. So, I so to, to say you've been busy still is an understatement because you've just you've done more than I've probably done in my life over lockdown, over over the pandemic. So, I, I can't install a door. Are you kidding? Okay, it doesn't look great. It's my first door. Like I, I'm better at like tiling and like, other types of projects in the house but 
<laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, you did mention that you've done a garden as well. Now, my garden needs doing. So, I mean, if I could fly you over to the UK, could you come do my garden for me, please? As it long as we good. really cash in on all the Mexican jokes that are just waiting right here to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. Uh, well, cool. As long as yeah. we don't get cancelled, we're, we're good. <laughs> I know, I know. No, we'll, we'll just like skirt the line dangerously. Pero está bien, porque soy mexicana, está bien. So. I'm game, I'm game. And I figured I'm going to have to show Callum how to fit a door at some point now as well, aren't I? This is coming from Jamie, who yesterday had to get his dad to come round to install the lights. So I'll take no DIY abuse from Jamie. Oh, electricity, I'm on. All right. I can make it happen. Whether or not it stays in the ceiling. I don't, know. I don't like wires, okay? I don't like wires. I I, I just avoid anything electrical. So I, I got my dad to come around. My dad's a firefighter. So if anything blows up, he's the right oh. man to have about. So. Do you have like a card? Do you think he can get places like really fast? Because I'm pretty sure my room is an entire fire hazard. <laughs> I mean... I mean, I'm sure it could get to you in about eight to ten hours on a plane. So, I mean, if that helps. That's not yeah. bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. International that's fire rescue. Time to get the animals out. <laughs> <laughs> International fire rescue. Hey, if you paid him, he'd do it because he likes money. So, I mean, he'd happily he do it. He does like money. He's like the million dollar man. Loves There's money. nothing wrong with a little money. Nothing no. wrong with it. It's nice to be able to buy the food you want to eat. That's the best part. I don't like want if you to have be a millionaire. To. Yeah, if, for that yeah, reason. Like, if, like, if, like, you know, we all can't agree that money's hurting us and we could lower the cost of things or do anything that would be, like, positive mm. for us, then it would be nice to have the money and get what we want. For like, sure. if that's not going to change, I guess, like, you know, you got to join them then. <laughs> the, the first thing I'd do if I won millions of pounds is probably just spend, like, a thousand pounds in in and out or something you know just oh, odd. So good. yeah in i wish we had in and out in the uk we yeah. we only we don't have it we only get it when we go to america and only in certain parts of america that oh, makes yeah. me angry because mm -hmm. i've been to states before where they're like oh yeah we don't get it here and i'm like what do you mean you don't get it here like west coast street don't get it and texas, texas the philly has cheese. It. yeah yeah texas does have it we have like philly cheesesteaks though like you know yeah. we got some stuff I live in Dottie's Donuts, which is a vegan donut shop I post about all the time. I rarely go on social media these days, but when I do, I make sure to find out what the donut is of the day and how I'm going to ruin my diet with it. <laughs> There's nothing Hell wrong yeah. with a donut. Yeah, we'll, we'll agree so on good. that. Yeah. So good. I mean, I, I discovered, I mean, you probably get them over in America anyway, but I had a couple of donuts yesterday that I discovered. Uh, they're just Oreo donuts with, like, strawberry goo inside of them. Mm. And oh my god, they are the. I even let Callum have one. I do feed him every now and then. Sometimes they are. She they are the most dotties. <laughs> my god, I, hey, I, I bought my friends ate this donut, and I'm gonna need you to like recreate that for me because they're like <laughs> over some water. Like borders are really like lame right now. So if you could make that donut, <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. We'll make it happen. I don't I got stuck in traffic a couple of weeks ago when I when I first bought my first pack when I discovered them. I got stuck in some traffic on the way home and I literally was sat there with a box of these donuts just eating every single one of them. So what people walking by and, and stuck in traffic near me were thinking that this this fat bearded guy shoveling donuts down his throat while he's stuck in traffic. But what? Hey, I, That's fine. I, 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 I think, think Paul, I, what a guy. I think, well, you go on, Jamie. You eat those I donuts. Have. Yeah, I was, yeah. I, was winning, I was winning at life at that moment, and I didn't care. You know, I was eating Oreo donuts with, with strawberry goo in my beard. It was heaven. You're like, I'm eating them before they're cool. So y'all yeah. can just take a page right now, take a picture, just know I did it first. <laughs> um, we've all had. If if anyone drives by or we're in traffic and you look into our car, it's a circus. I always have the dogs and or like. You know, when there was traveling, it was like wrestlers and the dogs. Um, yeah, yeah. I wear like I my coat right now looks like a like a giant acid paint coat, like it's just all trippy colors and rainbow, and it's like a Sherpa That's thing. It just looks like I came out of a festival, even though I haven't been to a festival. It's really um, warm, okay. So you got like the big coat, you've got the dogs kind of walking wherever they want, and then like food everywhere, 
loud music. They're, they seem to be okay with it at this point. But it's kind of like, you know, I mean, like, I'm unapologetic about it. There was a couple oh. years ago, though, where um, I drove out a couple. Oh, my God. It was like, it was like six years ago now. So I decided I was going to get a tray of pot brownies for me and my friend. <laughs> I just drove all this way. This person who makes these great brownies, because this person obviously for reasons doesn't deliver. So I'm driving forever. And I'm driving home in traffic with a tray. <laughs> um, and I was like, you know what? I'll just have a little. I'll just have a little. It's just going to make the drive better. Hell um, yeah. I'm still going to. Still gonna eat it when I get home, right? Like I'm just gonna in a party when I get home, right? And then I was like, this is so good. And the trick is if you don't have anything else in your stomach and you're only five foot tall like myself, <laughs> you just like kind of forget that there's stuff in it. And then you're like, Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna like have a little more. And then you realize from like a tray you could probably fit a normal rack of ribs on, you know, like a good size yeah. tray. You've eaten half of it. So you need to get home soon. Or it's all going to go. It's gone, yeah. And you're already like, how does, you know, like, how do these red lights in front of me just get, like, so bright and, like, <laughs> so nice? Like, does anyone ever really admire traffic? You're talking to no one. Does anyone feel this way about it? Because this is, like, super enlightening. And then you're like, oh, no, I have to, I have to drink water and get to the park. Yeah, oh. I was kind of at the height of my it's the first time I got to tell that story. Heard it here first, y'all. Exclusive. <laughs> Just no, like no, fall no. out of the chair. I, I really like <laughs> the the thought process of has anyone ever really just like stopped to appreciate traffic before? Like <laughs> everyone always bitches and moans about traffic, but has anyone ever wondered like how traffic feels about it? Or yeah, you know, and like think of it this way: like you're in traffic, all your obligations are suspended. Yeah, you, you can't be anywhere else. You don't have to be anywhere, anyone. Like, you're just there. You're sitting in it with everybody else. It's kind of like a sick day, although you're stuck in your I've car, never, so you better, yeah. like, put cool things in your car. If anything, I've it's... never thought about that before. I might have to start appreciating traffic a bit more because it's, it's... I have the ultimate road rage, and I get very angry. Maybe I'll start appreciating traffic and looking at it from a... From a different perspective. I'm I'm putting that on the uh the YouTube <sighs> title for this episode, what? like some kind of traffic appreciation, because I think that'll get the clicks. <laughs> I just need a way I can clickbait that title. So nice. It's just like like everybody's just kind of like here, we're together, and like isn't that what it's all about? And then you're like, <laughs> oh no, you have that one second of clarity, but then it's gone because you just ate half a tray of like awesome. Just put on I a really of... good playlist. <laughs> Might be my favorite interview we've done already. If I'm not not even kidding. <laughs> no, I, I was just thinking that myself as well. Someone, you don't have to plan any kind of shit and you just talk about any kind of shit. Perfect. Perfect. At the end, I mean, at, at the end of the interview, we'll just mention off the top of our heads like three things to do with wrestling, and then I'll just stick them in the title so people still think we discussed wrestling. But it's just all at the oh, end yeah. of the episode. Yeah. That, you gotta wait. You gotta watch the whole thing. Hello, Star. That's it. Yeah. This is not a safe place for you. Oh my God. She's just ready. She's <laughs> tidy and evil and just ready to well, it, it's a cat. step on this keyboard. <laughs> my cat's around Callum somewhere, isn't she? So, yeah, she's around here somewhere. I have, yeah, there is a cat around here somewhere as well. She's a. Uh, there was one wrestling thing that I think we have to get out the way first because we're yeah we're we pretty, can talk whatever we're pretty I like good, wrestling um, still he has we're, to ruin it doesn't he we're pretty good um well just pretty well connected with Colin from Synergy um Synergy wrestling and you wrestled at Synergy recently at mm -hmm. the Garden State Invitational uh, against Casey Catal mm -hmm. um, it was a very good show we watched it. Um, what what are your thoughts on the Garden State Invitational? You were unlucky in that match, but mm -hmm. is there anything you took away from it? Did you do you want to get back to Synergy anytime soon? Are you smiling because you know something, or am I just guilty I and I know, know something and you're smiling? <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get a scoop. 
Okay, so um, I've wrestled like 12 years or 100, you know, whatever. So I, uh, in all of my years, a million random things have happened. You know, wardrobe malfunctions. You take a really hard scent on from someone and you pee a little bit. Just a little bit. We've all been. You know, yeah. <laughs> you have a lot less plumbing than y'all, so it's, you know, just quick right out. It's not, there's nothing stopping it. But I've never been nauseous in a match and i i think being away i like forgot what i need to eat and how i need to get ready for the day you know like i was excited because i was like cool i get to play but like also it feels kind of second nature in a lot of ways it's not like i stopped working out as soon as gyms were available like i did you know did my best to stay in some kind of shape without touching people <laughs> to risk over <laughs> and uh we called this match you know i i asked her what i could do to to be in service to her. That's that's my approach. What can I do? Are you trying to establish something? What, do you, what would you like to tell today? Is there a move I could help you work towards? Let's do some EEV. It's my favorite. Ask anyone. And uh, I had this like cool move I wanted to do on the apron. As you know, I'm kind of like a in a you know, monogamous relationship with the apron. And uh, <laughs> right out the gate, I just kind of knew. And I was like, cool, go to do a thing. I you know, had her strike me. And upon the first strike, I almost threw up. And I was like, oh, no. Like, oh, what is this? Like, what? I'm not blown. Like, we didn't even do anything. Like, because you, you've been there, too. You're having, like, a match, and it's intense, and there's story, and you're, like, blown up because you don't know how to breathe. You know, I've been there, but not at the level where I was like, I might have to claw my way out of here because like I just can't let people like watch that mm. it's like it's like t-rex like I can't so we were wrestling the whole time and she's looking to me to like help with certain spots and like call and like you know do the things you're supposed to do and I was just kind of like this is I have not I cannot throw up on her because they will just give her the win I think that's like a dq and then and, and everyone loses but she gets a crown <laughs> So I'm trying to spend that whole match trying to call to her, fix whatever's happening here. At one point, I turn around and look at commentary, and I was like, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and Missy's on the commentary, and she's like, oh, like she told me, she's like, I can't help her. I don't know what to do to help her. And like, there was no help. I just needed someone else to know in the moment, like share this experience with me. Um, and it was just like the first, like, I, it's really funny to me and it worked out. Like we managed to just, I was like, all right, we'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to go to the apron. It's going to be cool. We'll get to the, and then I, I took whatever from her and I was like, nope. And I just pulled her and I said, take me home, please. <laughs> <laughs> and all the times I was trying to let her know I was nauseous. It like I mean she didn't hear me or whatever the angle or projection of the audio and the wavelength went to Narnia I don't know what happened but I would tell her I was like at one point I gripped her and I was like put me in a hold I'm sick and she puts a choke hold on and I was trying to laugh and also not <laughs> the that's the worst time. boob you could use <laughs> I was like of course and that that kind of thing is like really that that happens to me i was wrestling Britt baker once and i was having a wardrobe malfunction and the ref was you know covering it up doing what he can he's doing the shimmy in front of the camera you know hey what are you saying i was like you see this right and he's like yeah totally you good and i was like no not really so i was talking to the ref at this one and i um see it happening like i'm just out because of the way i wear my gear which i'll explain later so i looked at her and i just like panicked locked eyes and i was like cover me thinking we had this like you know she could see it's not like they're huge as so you could see it was out but she dropped what she was doing to like literally cover me and all i could do was laugh and almost forget to kick out because i was like she did she covered me like she went for the pin it makes sense oh, it makes sense it's good it's just, we're all here now. and that's just like that's so of my life like yes yes put a hold on me i'm sick ah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We've won Probably wrestling. Literally yeah. pinned you. Yep. Yep. Amazing. Amazing. Because then you think, oh my God, I should have been more specific or whatever, right? Like you're like, of all the words, I use the wrestling words. Um, and we got through it and she was concerned since that I was hurt. She was so sweet. I was like, look, I'm sorry. This is all good. And she's like, I made you sick. I was like, no, pretty sure it was like 
my lack of dietary supplementation, like food and probably like some water. <laughs> like you get, you just get like in the rhythm and you have three Red Bulls and you forget a bottle of water, you know? But you did it. You finished it, right? I wrestled that whole match. Yeah. I'm talking now. <laughs> I don't know how you did that. Seriously, I have no idea. Like, yes. even talking about being sick makes me feel sick. So, it's so funny. How do you wrestle a match while you're feeling nauseous and sick? I don't get it. That's the closest I've ever been to Russian roulette. <laughs> Callum, I think we might have to watch this match when we've, we've finished this We've chat. watched it before. Is that <laughs> yeah, I know. Thing? Yeah. No, I mean, but now, I knowing, have... now knowing the background. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll watch it again so we can... Now we know what we're looking for in this this town. <laughs> on, yeah. Oh my Love. god. I mean, Amazing. But hey, so I mean, are you uh, looking to go back to Synergy? I mean, yeah. Colin, it was it was such a sweet environment. Colin's amazing. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. like like barring like different like circumstances, like I w- I would have like been more huggy, you know. Well, He's obviously, yeah. Such a yeah. character, isn't he? he yeah. He, yeah, he's, we've uh... been very close with Colin over the last few like months, and we've just bonded over his love for British television as well. Um, so we're we're with you there, hundred percent. We know we know what he's like. He, he's, he's a lovely a guy. He, yeah. he really is. Yeah, he really is. And you'll you'll get to hug him one day. The world will be back to normal at some point. I can um... feel it. Uh, one, <laughs> one of the promotion I've got to mention before I forget is you've wrestled a fair few times. For mm. one of my favorite ever independent promotions, just because of how creative it is, uh, you wrestled for Chikara a few times. And, oh, this is a couple. Yeah, and <laughs> I am so incredibly jealous. Like, I've never been to a Chikara show, I never will do now, but um, what was it like being at Chikara? Because that's the place of characters, isn't it? There's nowhere more creative on the independence than Chikara was. So, was that a good experience for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's actually, I mean, I uh, I spent my career learning on the road after I, I left a very unhealthy start. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like my introduction to wrestling was a lot of carny and bidding on me and ruining a long time relationship. And it was a very negative experience. Yeah. Yeah, super. Yeah, it gets real dark in that closet. Um, and then I just like learned on the road. I'd get there early before matches and I'd like learn a move and like. All right, look something up and then learn and move um, until I was able to. I trained with Truth Martini for a little bit because he ran like a small program and I got mm-hmm. like some foundation. And then, um, you know, MQ ran a seminar and I had the tail on at the time and I thought like, this is perfect. But what he actually gave me was like the exact thing I needed, which was everything else, right? Like I had everything else and it's like, oh, this is like a really fun character. But I didn't like necessarily need all of those accoutrements mm. uh i was i was given the gift that i wanted all along which was a, a safe place to learn to wrestle sure and like really learn i mean he's brilliant he knows right like how everything works why it works where it comes from um different ways for you to impl- like implement that with your character that you like character continuity um how to structure matches anywhere you go different ways to perceive the same thing that we love there's no necessarily like set way to do it there is a set shikara style yeah like that's what you learn there right yeah. but i was able to like take that and during the time where it was like i was doing shikara and beyond was running uncharted territory it was just like every week you got to like up your game and i was able to take all of these different tools and while i didn't always wrestle that kind of like you know like the ants right like i didn't have like that that wasn't my persona sure um to have that like smooth dance but i was able to take all those things and make it make sense for me in a place that's grittier and like pound for pound hits harder mm-hmm. um and so like i took a lot of those two things that were simultaneously running and kind of that's where i really come from in terms of my style yeah i i always felt like the shikara shows that um i saw you on because i i used to be a member of uh, shikara Topia, so watch all the hey. uh, shikara so good uh, but I always felt like you fit into it anyway without having to have that over-the-top character, which Chikara was known for. Uh, yeah. But Chikara always did that. They always blended really good wrestling with really strong characters as well. Like the mm-hmm. ants, for example. That wouldn't yeah. work anywhere apart from Chikara. <laughs> um, it, it 
it was like an exclusive to, to Chikara where these characters just weren't there. I mean, I know they tried it in Ring of Honor at one point where they had like the ice creams there at one point, I think, but it <laughs> kind of didn't work. But in Chikara, it always did. So yeah, I had to ask about that because Chikara has always had a soft spot in my heart. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I really got a chance, like a real chance at my dream mm. because of that. Because without that knowledge, right, like how hard it is for women in wrestling. Sure. Um, but without the, those tools and the confidence to be like, no, I know how this works. And to then bring that to a lot of other women that also fall through the cracks of training. And like, just, yeah. to, you know, that's like a whole thing, right? Like that's a whole podcast in and of itself. Yeah. And um, to be given that confidence. And that's where I started into gender wrestling. And I'll <clears> never <throat> go back. No, I'm just kidding. I love it. I love it. But it also taught me a lot of ways to like learn that intensity. Um, there is just that like that slight difference of that. There's like a weird yeah. once you once you pass it, you get to this level of intensity. It's safe because you're both doing the exact thing everyone tells you to do, which is go 100 percent, do the move 100 percent. Right? You're doing it safe. You know how to do it. Do it 100 percent intense. It looks the best. You always hear these things. Right? It is the best. It's safest. Mm -hmm. And you learn how to like not worry innately yeah. worry innately worry and then you can bring that to others which i was able to be that for others like all right cool like you're gonna hit me we're gonna figure it out like we're gonna get out don't worry about it yeah does, does that come across in a performance then so say you're in the ring and you are worrying about stuff like that is that oh, something yeah. which the fans can pick up on or is it just something which you as a performer obviously you want to try and get out of that mindset i think it's a little of both it depends yeah. on the performer like, I think, like, uh, the, a lot of that, like, apprehension, you can tell, or you watch someone and you'll be like, hmm, is she, like, she's newer, right? She looks a little bit, right? Ap like, uh, a little hesitance or a little, or like, it's a little pull in the strikes, um, a little pause before a signature move, mm. you know, all of those little things. Like, when I first learned the stinger, it came as an accident. We were watching a Lucha match. And I still can't do this weird. It was almost like the long bow I do. So you hook for long bow and you like back roll and up and then go over the legs. So you just do this complete backwards thing. And I kept trying to do it, but I do have that thing with like visualizing something 360 for me. Like I'd have to like see it the exact way to do it. Yeah. And I somehow came up with that like inverse of a clover leaf. But mm. I had to do it for a while. I had to have them on their back. I had to go through a ritual, right? Like you go through a ritual, you get them down on their back. You lace it, you hook it, you lift it, you flip it. But now I just see it and I'm like, yeah, I'll just tuck it. Like, oh, you're just going to try to do it up and over facing me. Like I can tuck it under and stick it in the buckle. Like you start to see it from any which way because you get those reps mm -hmm. in. Um, and it just takes that kind of like confidence in yourself to know you've got to make it look ugly for a while. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just can't be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned there, uh, I know uh, going back a bit, you mentioned the intergender wrestling as well. And um, we've had a couple of guys on. We, we spoke to Josh Alexander and Chris Dickinson. And um, we've got their their point of view. Great guys. But um, from your, obviously, from a female point of view, what's your thoughts on this gender? Because I know a lot of people, some are for it, some aren't for it. But what's your take? Yeah. Um, there is something to be said about understanding and being aware enough to understand the difference between I was taught not to hit a woman and we are at work mm, yeah. and we are competitors. Yeah. If you like, if we're not in work confines and you hit me or you are hesitating, whatever that is, whatever that is that you're thinking of, I'm gonna light your ass up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Retweet That's... me in person. I can say it straight face. But like no one ever watches a movie and questions a female lead or a female that's fighting any superhero movie that like sure. these conversations have just they're cyclical because people just don't want to hear the idea and like uh, uh anything going on should not have any kind of weight on our ability mm. <laughs> you know on our knowledge you know, like you know any of that so any type of um gender orientation any like that none of that should matter when you're in the ring my name is what should matter my name should come first yeah it, this is kind of what we've said before on, on the show when we've spoken to people about it 
um, there's some fans who have a problem with intergender wrestling and they'll be happy to believe that The Undertaker, for example, is a real dead wizard, but they yeah. have a problem believing that a woman can beat a man. You know, yeah. and it's like, get your priorities right. Because, like, for example, we spoke to Layla Hirsch. Oh, I, I love her. Don't doubt for a second she'd murder most people <laughs> in real life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was like the closest body wise to me that I've ever wrestled. Right. She's one of, she's one of my favorite matches. And so she's, fun. She's incredible. And like yeah. I mean, there's there's such a good list that yourself, you should definitely have yourself on that list too. Like some phenomenal female talents, but I it it's at the point where I don't even know if it should be called intergender wrestling because you, like you said you are a competitor. If there's two competitors, surely that's the focus of the match. It's not that one's a man, one's a woman, or anything yeah. like that. It's just it's a match. Do you think we're ever going to get to a point where there's a, a wrestling match between a man and a woman, and it's not labeled into gender wrestling? I know that we, I say we, Beyond Wrestling ran a show without any kind of acknowledgement to that word. Right. Um, I, I like, I didn't get to watch it back, like, intensely. Because I like to watch it. Like, I'll, like, watch the show, and then I'll watch all the matches um, to hear the commentary is why I was saying that. Like, I didn't get to, like, tune into the commentary as much. But I know he's very, like, Drew is very diligent on that. Because that's how he sees it. Mm. Like, like you, like, you are your name. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what you fill in that, that's, like, what, what do you represent, right? I, I'm solo. The thing about it is, like, you're reminded every day you're a woman wrestling. Mm. Good for you. You're a woman wrestler. Thanks. Got it. The hundredth time you've put me into that. It's like, I, I am a wrestler. And it's like, you, you don't say, like, you're a man wrestler. Mm, exactly. Listen here, yeah. man wrestler. That's good for man wrestling. Like, no one says that. Nobody like, says no that. One, no one talks like that. It's weird. One of my so. biggest pet peeves, too, is <laughs> even when they're announcing matches and they say the, the next match is a woman's match. And it's like, yeah. why yeah. Why did you have to state that? Like, it's just a wrestling <laughs> match. I love the incorporation more. It Like, making it equal, um, it, it just kind of, like, falls in different ways, right? Like, I love focusing more on like let's get everyone's pronouns right mm. let's open up a safe space for everyone to wrestle and include everyone and make those matches fun like you know what would it be like for still life to wrestle dickinson mm. like that like those characters and like how they already look animated in your mind you already have a clear picture of what these two beautiful humans look like yeah. And then you're like, it's like Street Fighter. Like you pick out and then you, like, you know their specials, you know what the three point punch is, you know how to get spinning bird kick. Like you're waiting to see how all these pop off. And like, that's the fascinating thing about what we do. Cause all of us have loved some kind of like fighting game, wrestling game, comic book, entertainment. It all comes from that. In stunt work, no one is like, you know, oh, well you can't do that, I'm sorry. No, you have to do your stunt work together. Like <laughs> just more togetherness. Yeah, that, that you mentioned Chris Dickinson. Uh, he had a match re fairly recently with Priscilla Kelly at GCW, and they it's absolutely wild. tore the house down. Like they beat yeah. the crap out of each other. And I got to he... sneak outside to watch it. It was oh intense. really? Yeah. Because <laughs> it looked like an amazing match to see live. Like that they, they beat the shit out of each other. They didn't hold any punches or kicks, yeah. and yeah. he really went in, and so did she. And at the end of it, you were just like, well, yeah, the that was just a normal match. Like that, I can't see how anyone could watch that and have a problem with it being a man and a woman. I, I don't know yeah. if that's just. I don't know. I, I think some people are old fashioned with it, and that's understandable. That's their point of view. But I really hope we do get to a point where it is just normalized to have a match between a man and a woman, and it's just a match. Yeah, it'll be taking time. I feel like it's just also how people. Like if there is more, going back to earlier, if there, if there is more room to plant the seeds we need to grow compassion and tear down the walls of like fear and stuff, I think yeah. there's a lot of that fear. It's like, you know, people have suffered domestic abuse. And I, I am on an interview once, um, like someone asked about that. And, and I was like, you know, like I've gone through domestic abuse. Yeah. I, I, I have gone through sexual assault and rape. I have been on the receiving end of that. I'm a survivor comfortable with it i'm um grateful 
to be where I am and to have the awareness to try and like get in the ring and show others that this is fine and you're capable. Mm -hmm. You know, there is that side of it. If, if a little girl's watching, if, you know, kids are watching in general, any, you know, anyone of a young age can see that equality yeah. and that that kind of will breed that respect and that'll breed that openness and awareness that there's a different way to view someone and you view them by their soul. You see them by like who they are and that light that they bring. Like that's who we are, you know? Like what we get here is like, you know, all right. It's no, just, it's the car, you know? <laughs> it's a very important message. And like you said, it, I think you're right. It becomes more normal by just practicing it. And the more it's, more it happens in wrestling, for example, the more normal it becomes over time. It does just take time. And yeah. I think we're on the right track of it, though. And it's great to have, like, I would never take away from people that do love, right? If it's an all men's show, that's like a tradition. Like, I don't want to eradicate, <laughs> you don't fuss with tradition. I don't want to eradicate traditions. Like, Shimmer is a home for me. I adore <laughs> Shimmer. And you will get that same intensity <laughs> when they bring over Joshi wrestlers. And like a lot of the women that we know that have gone, you know, to get signed to television or have gone and then become that role for other women's wrestlers coming up. When you get that beat down, you're like, oh, and you survive it and you get to the back and there's ice waiting for you because you just got your ass kicked, but it was good. It's something about that. That's like part of coming up, you know, you're like, yeah, now we're playing, like now we're wrestling. Um, and so there is beauty to that and it deserves its day in the sun, just like shows that have all kinds of intergender wrestling without calling it intergender wrestling there's yeah. there's a fluidity to sexuality there's a fluidity in wrestling and once those start to kind of like allow that appreciation for one another it won't have to be like we don't need just an all-man's show and just an all-women's show it could be like that's cool too and this show is going to be like this and we're going to have room for this and that way everyone can kind of just be together and appreciate each other for their strengths rather than focusing on what we don't have Absolutely. Do you know, just uh, as well, just, just, I just want to throw this out there. Um, I very rarely smile, and I think this must be the, the first interview we've done where someone's actually made me I, smile. I was just thinking of... that. I was looking at Jamie thinking, is, is he all right? Is he smiling? <laughs> He's <laughs> frozen. <laughs> yeah, <it's> frozen. Yeah. <laughs> I've been frozen for the whole interview. That's it. Just a lag. Nah, hey. You're making me smile. You're, 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 you're... You're the first one we've ever had that's made me smile for the majority of the interview. So, well done. Well done. I'm um, next person. <laughs> I actually did freeze. I saw. I was just like waiting for it. I was like, oh, oh is it a bit God. or not? Is it a bit? I, I was pretending <laughs> to freeze and I actually did freeze. <laughs> like, oh, for God's sake. I'm. Somebody I wanted to ask you about as well. I know you, you've been in the ring with her. I, I think. She's had more of the, the best years 2020 uh, of anybody. I mean, wrestler in general. Uh, that's Thunder Rosa. I mean, what was it like working with her? I love her. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah. We, uh, I don't know, we're just, we're in sync. Like, we get each other. Like, she gets me. And, like, I like her style. Yeah. It's nice. Like, you know, doing Tournament for Tomorrow 2018, right? That was, feels like decades ago at this point. Um, but Twisted Sisters getting to wrestle Bird and the Bee, like, it was fun because you just know you can just trust the other person to while out. It's kind of like you just, like, show up <laughs> and it's like, what's your favorite magazine? Like, good housekeeping. Like, you just know you're going to, like, have that kind of, like, it's cool. It's, yeah. You're, you're going to want to fall on the floor. That's great. I'm going to want to go on top of a bar, right? And we're just going to, like, see where that takes us. Awesome. Um, she's, she's a great mind. She, her passion drives me like and even when i'm you know i'm typically very like yeah like into the night but there are days where it's hard and it's a struggle and i'm down and then you just go on her page and you're like yeah you're right girl like that's like a good sister to have you're like yep just get back up and just keep the hustle and keep going um and we do check in on each other and you know say hello every once in a while and make sure we're both still getting that hustle she's great yeah she had a phenomenal 2020, didn't she, as well? I mean, she, you know, I mean, NWA, wow. AEW, I mean, my God, Mission Pro Wrestling. I mean, I, I said, I can't remember who we spoke to a while ago, and I said, you know, 2020 for me, Thunder was the MVP of pro wrestling. Um, I'm, I think 
she was untouchable last year. Um, and it's been a pleasure, and it's a pleasure to see where she goes from now. Um, like I said, I know you worked with her. I mean, would you like to work with her again? Is that something you'd like in the future to happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Like, cool. Like, everyone just get where they're getting at AEW, and then bring the bird in the sea and still life. It's a little faction. We're a big right. move. Just bring us, and then like it's then like then I I won't go anywhere ever. I'll do whatever. You want me to make cakes today? Great, I'm here. I'll do whatever you want me. Yes. Yes, sir, uh, and madam. Like, that's where I want to be. We know what cakes you make, though. Let's, let's, hang on a minute, right? Listen, I'm not going to make those cakes unless requested. But no one's going to oh, request okay. that because it's not legal in Florida. Okay. <laughs> Stay forever, okay. mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not legal anywhere over here, so you're all right. You probably oh, don't. Jamie, yeah, Jersey, speak... Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Uh, speaking of over here, Jamie, uh, you did wrestle in the UK. Did yeah, I? you did. Um, it feels also like a decade ago. 2019 was. Oh, a, God, that's, a that that might as well be 10 years ago. Yeah, it's insane. It's I can't figure out what's going on with this world. Like, just I. I I just I want some normal back. So, We've not had a wrestling show since March. Yeah, and it's just you the know. A couple of times you do wrestle too, you feel this like strange anxiety with it all. Where you're like, this is great. I love what I'm doing. Oh my god, we're in a pandemic. What if I do this? What if you, you know, like, oh, I don't want to be like asymptomatic. And so it's just this kind of like fifty-fifty battle, and like sometimes yeah. one wins more than the other, and you have to kind of weigh your options there. Um, where exactly are you over the? Pond, uh, the puddle. Well, you've wrestled not too far from us before. You wrestled at um, Tidal in Leeds. Yeah. So Leeds is about 40 miles from us. So not too far. So yeah, we're in Hull. If you've ever heard of Hull before, it's in Yorkshire. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes. So that's yes. where we are. I miss Lo- it. I lovely, love it. Oh, I lovely love it. place called Hull. But, um, I'm, always, I'm always surprised when people have heard of where we're from. Just yeah, especially people. in America. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no one. I no would have gone ended. back. No, I loved it. I loved the tour, and we went to like seven different places. Um, and we missed the last one that we were gonna do, or not the last one, but it was like towards the end of the trip in Dublin. We were supposed to do something, and we didn't get to do it. Like it was a bunch of flights that got canceled. I, I don't. I've never had that in my life, where I was like, "We'll just get a car and we go." You can't. It's like eight hours away. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a bus. It's five hours. Like, what is that? Like, the inability to have that like control over your destiny there was, I think, the only stressful part for me because I was like, so we're at the hands of other drivers. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You'll get back over here, though. You you'll get back over here. I know the the world is going to open up at some point. It just yeah. And I'm just gonna go know. live with Shay. There we go. Get yourself over here. Do that. I think that was my favorite place. Wales was really really oh my god yeah oh we got one me with the spoons i was done i was done i was done. <laughs> done i saw dragons and i saw that like spoons is a love language over there and i was like yeah of course i'm just gonna oh, get yeah. a calf water absolutely yeah it's amazing <laughs> you, you've got to come back when you can it i mean there's no shortage of promotions in the uk you know that mm. uh, i'm sure they'd all be happy to have you back but if you do let us know. We'll come support you as well because we'll be going to every single wrestling show we can when the pandemic yeah. is over because I don't care what show it is, we'll be there. But <laughs> oh, yeah, and I mean, I'll bring the donuts. I'll bring the Oreo donuts. There yeah, we go. Bring the donuts. Oh yes, good. Yeah. We will stack up on Oreo strawberry donuts. That's um, so good. Amazing. Before before we start to wrap up as well, um, uh-huh. The indie scene in general during the pandemic, I think, has thrived. Obviously, obviously you've worked with GCW and, and beyond. Um, what have, What's your thoughts been this year with the indie uh, wrestling? Because, like I said, I think they've really stepped up and, and, and really thrived uh, during the pandemic. I'm really grateful for IWTV mm. and all the, all the moving parts that that takes um, because I, I think there would have been a way bigger hole <laughs> That we would all yeah. have to deal with if this was an era where we couldn't watch each other or watch old yeah. things or like mm-hmm. nate webb has a cooking show like all these other things were that allowed for us to express ourselves and feel connected um there was a couple of youtube live we all kind of watched it was like let's watch old matches together and like 
I think trying to like bring us together in that way was very helpful. And um, I, I applaud people trying to continue like doing shows uh, during this time. I wish there was a lot less blood during the pandemic, although I do understand. I understand, but at the same time, I just hope everyone is safe so that they can continue doing that because I, I don't want to lose anyone selfishly, but I also want people to continue having their health to see where it goes when it's full on back, you know, that they've put themselves on the line and everyone on TV as well, putting themselves out there as a way to continue performing, but also yeah. as a way to say like, hey, you at home, I know that you can't right now, or maybe your, you know, area isn't running shows, but like, it's still alive and there is that hope there. Um, so I really do commend everyone that's taken those risks for themselves, for us, all of that, just to kind of keep us together. Yeah, yeah. even from a fan point of view, just getting to watch the American Indies, uh, especially uh, me and Jamie have said before, we haven't had any wrestling here. So we've just been throwing ourselves straight into the American Indies because that's all we've really yeah. got to watch right now. Um, and we're falling in, I, I, we're already indie fans anyway, but we're falling in love with like a few promotions like Freelance. Uh, Black Label Pro, for example, okay. GCW, just absolutely yeah. hooked to it now. So if there is a silver line into this whole thing, it's that we've kind of like rekindled our love for the American Indies. Uh, it's yeah. just such a strong scene right now. And I think it's going to do incredible things in the coming years as well. Especially yeah. when it's this strong during a pandemic. It we're surviving now. Real. We're yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing what like, we can now. So obviously it'll grow. Absolutely. Well, one final thing. I mean, we mentioned like, putting shows on during a pandemic, fans, no fans. Uh, I heard Stephanie McMahon say that they're going to allow 25,000 fans for WrestleMania this year. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Do you think that's too much? <laughs> I think that says a lot, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know everyone is going to have their negative test results ready and handy before they walk into that arena and that right. everyone is going to be socially distanced and use hand sanitizer um, and, and respect each other's space. So that, under, under those ideal, perfect circumstances, clearly. That's, that's 25,000 each night. That's 50,000. <laughs> 50,000 over two nights. It's fine. They'll, like, it's, like you said, they'll, they'll all stick to those rules. It'll be fine. It's probably fine. It's probably fine, yeah. Well, we'll see. But on that bombshell, <laughs> literally, this has been the most fun we've ever had. I, I've never smiled so much during an interview. So that's a testament to you because I don't like to smile. So you he, just, he, he hates fun. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you for having me. This was great. I needed this. Oh, it was awesome. Awesome. You, you've got to come back as well. You've got to come back oh, at yeah. some point. And we'll just chat some more shit. We'll get some donuts. We'll get some whiskey. We'll just chat some. That's crap. what we'll do. We'll do the next episode on like a flight of donuts and compare with also a flight of whiskey. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, before we go, tell everybody where they can find you. you know, social media, merchandise. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, so right now, I'm primarily using Instagram when I use Shadow It's at Regulation Solo Darling. Uh, most of my work right now, or 100% of my work, is going to be through OnlyFans. So please check out my OnlyFans, onlyfans.com slash Solo Darling. It's a nice little community there. It's our little club. Um, and I keep it really fun, and it's not exactly what you would expect at all. So I invite you all to join and have a good time on that. Uh, and I don't very much tweet, but it's at Solo Darling. And sometimes I go on there to like my friend stuff. And a big cartel is www.solodarling.com. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you, you knew all of your handles off the top of your head. Usually <laughs> when we say to people, where can we find you? Like, oh, God, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been doing a lot of work on those. On the OnlyFans. Really, really fun. Fun stuff. I'll See, put the link so for everything good. in the description. <laughs> it's, it's a whiz with that kind of stuff. He knows it, what he's it's doing. Not that, it's not that hard, Joe. You make it seem like I'm um, Stephen Hawking. I'm literally just putting a link in the description. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are Stephen Hawking. What you do is Stephen Hawking's to me. All right. right I, I, and I love that about you, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Solo, honestly, thank you so much. I meant what I said. I've never smiled so much on a show. It's been an absolute pleasure. 
we will definitely get you back on because you haven't got a choice because we think you're awesome, so we're going to make it happen. Okay. So. Good. Well, thank you both so much. Have a great no. day. Have Bye, everyone day. on YouTube. Bye. <laughs> thank you very much, Solo, darling. Thank you.